Hello, I'm Peter Pijn from the Edge Software Consultancy and today I'm going to show you the third video in a series where we explain how to do nonlinear curve fits in Morvid. So let's launch Morvid and we will then load the file uh, where we left off after the second presentation. So this is a blank Morvid opening and now we load this file and that brings in the structure as we created in the first and the second video. So here is uh, all the fields in the table and the query table was added in the second video and that was linked to this uh, import button, import instruction where we bring in the data from an external source. So the binder itself doesn't contain any data yet. It just contains all the formulas to do the curve fit. So let's bring in the data. We can point to one or multiple XLS files. So this is the one we created. So it contains three data sets and it has done all the work for us, but it starts with reading the data set, the concentration and the activity columns. So it brings in the data and Morphit scales automatically uh, to the data it finds. So it, 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 uh, it brings in here these data points and here it sees there are two replicates uh, for this concentration point one. So uh, then it, it plots these data as the yellow data points here. So here you see these replicates and then it performs the fit. So the fit is done in this cell. This is a very important cell because it's, it is kind of the engine of this binder and this is for fish, visual feedback. So the blue curve is the result of this fit. And the blue curve in this case is a sigmoidal curve that is determined by four parameters, the min, the max, the log EC50 and the hill coefficient. And these are coming back from the fit cell and that is done through a formula. And here you see an example where this syntax, the, the fit is the cell where it's coming from and the dot min is the parameter that is taken out of this and stuck into this cell as new data. So this is the way we can compute these four uh, components. Right, so here is where we left off after the second video. And the first thing I want to show you now and to add to this binder is giving you some feedback on the EC50 in the chart. So in order to do that, we set up a new data field. So this is it and we call it Y50. And why the Y50? That is because we are interested in the EC50 and that is defined at the point where right in the middle between the mi minimum and the maximum. So this is the maximum at approximately 10. This is the minimum at approximately two. So the midpoint will lie uh, around six. So that is the point we try to achieve here. So the formula is max min. So we are pointing to these two, the min and the max. We divide that by two and we add the minimum. And that gives us the value of around six, as, as, as we were predicting, 5.8, right in the middle between the minimum and the maximum. And then we reduce the number of decimals here, and then we add another data point, and that is the x part of that coordinate. And let's swap these. So we move it down with the arrow here. This is the way you can order all your fields in, in, in the binder, in the table. And the x50 is just brought back from the y50 through the curve. And there is a special built-in formula for that. It's called cat x at y. That's this function. And all it needs is the curve itself, which is the fit. And then the y50 point. And then we get the projection of the y50, which sits here, through the curve on the x-axis. So this, this is about the value of 7.7, .7, which lies here, and that is exactly the coordinate x in x, y terms of the EC50. So we can now plot this uh, in the chart, and we do that by just double-clicking on the chart header. 
and that brings up the, the chart wizard. So we go to series and there we have the data and the fit. So this was the yellow data points and this is the blue fit curve. So we add to it a new series and that's going to be, be called the EC50. And that is of course just a point. And then we are bringing in the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. And that's all we need to do. And here we see in the preview that it is already uh, displaying the EC50 nicely. So it's now shown in red and we want to have it in the same color as the plot itself, as the, the fit itself. And the way to do that is just go back to fit and use the color group field. And give it a name. And if you then give the EC50 the same name, then that will tell Morphit to plot uh, to plot this series in the same color as the other series. So in this way you can control all the coloring. So let's also change the point of the EC50. So let's make it slightly larger and also display it as a star 10. So that is then a nice display of your EC50 in the middle of your curve. And this is great of course for interaction with your data because you can now judge for yourself if the EC50 lies in the range that you were measuring. So it can easily happen uh, in, in some of your data, of course, that your EC50 lies outside of the curve. So for instance here, and that is a, 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 a range that you didn't measure. And then that might be reason for you to reject the whole uh, parameter extraction or the whole fit. So this is, uh, this is one way of doing, uh, doing this and to give you some more visual feedback. So next thing to do is uh, talk a little bit about outliers because uh, often in this sort of data, not all the data are uh, uh, accepted. So there might be outliers which you might have reason uh, to knock out. So knocking out data in Morphit is easy. You can just click on a cell and knock out that data point. So that brings in a cross, so this is crossed out now. And then you see that data point is disappearing. So I will bring it back in and do another one. And you see that data point disappearing here. So it is replaced by a gap, basically. You don't see it. And this is the default action on the chart. Uh, by the way, the fit is changing on the fly as well. You see these parameters changing when I knock in and knock out the data points. Right. So. What we want instead is that you get visual feedback again in your chart about which data points have been knocked out. So the solution is again, go to the series, add a new data series, and then we call this knockout. And that will be a special chart type, and that is called the knocked out points. So this is telling Morphit immediately uh, the way it needs to handle those knocked out points, so it will use crosses and all that instead. So we give it the same color as your data. So the data, we will give it color B. The knockout will also get color B. And then we use as the X values the same as the data, the concentration here. And for the Y values, we use the activity. And there we are. Now we have, uh, if we now knock out a data point, it will be shown as a little cross. So this is not so clear. Let's do another one, this one, and it will be a cross here. So a cross now means this data has been knocked out and it doesn't influence uh, the parameters any longer. So this is one way to knock out a data point or in fact, a whole range of data points. Another way to do it is to click on the graph itself now. So I, I have now my arrow on a data point and I double click on it and then it will be knocked out uh, immediately. And that's a toggle. I can knock it back in by clicking on it again. So, and this works exactly in the same way as knocking it out through the numeric field. So this is now uh, a second nice addition to the chart with some visual feedback. And uh, now it's time to do a third one. Although we are doing a new plot of the parameters itself. So 
remember that we now have the expectancy parameters of the log EC50, the hill, the max and the min, but often you also want to have the, the, the spread, so the variance basically of, of these, these means, these mean estimates. So to do that, it's quite, it requires a couple of fields. So let's do the standard error of the log EC50 first. So we insert a field and we call that the log EC50 SE for standard error. And then the formula is simple again. We bring it then back from the fit cell, log EC50, and we use the word standard error. And that's what we need. If you forgot exactly this syntax, then uh, just a reminder that you can click on the fit cell. And then if you then scroll down in the properties pane, you will see all the potential parameters that you have uh, for this particular sigmoidal fit. So we have now used the log EC50 standard error. And that is, uh, that is brought back into through this formula into this field. So let's reduce the number of decimals, and then we can use this SE to work out the log EC50 lower. That is the lower threshold of a range we want to compute, and this is the log EC50 upper, the higher threshold. So the lower is computed just by taking the log EC50 itself, minus the SE. That, oh, there's an error in it, sorry. There we are. And then the upper is computed as the log EC50 plus the standard error. That's it. That's it. So reduce the number of decimals. This is it. And now we are ready to plot the log EC50 as a bar chart. Uh, but before we do that, I want to explain you that sometimes you don't want to plot the log EC50, but you want to compute the EC50 itself. So let's do that as well. I see there's a little typo here. Let's change that. That's just the name of the field. Now we insert a field called EC50. And that is computed from the log EC50 by taking the, ten, the power of 10. So is the power 10 log EC50. So this is the way to compute the EC50 from the log EC50, a very simple formula. And we can do the same for the lower and the upper range. So let's do the EC, let's call this the, low, the EC50 lower, and that is done, is power 10, and then we take the lower here, log EC50 lower, and then we do the same. Upper. It's quite a lot of work, uh, although it's all pretty straightforward, and you only need to do this once to get to a nice production binder, of course. 10. And this is, uh, right, here we are. Now we have the EC50 and its uh, lower and upper confidence uh, uh, interval. We are going to change the number of decimals. And notice that this is now an asymmetric band around the EC50 because everything was worked uh, in the log domain and now we have converted into the linear domain again. On, on the in the concentration on the concentration scale, so this is uh, all we require. So basically, now we can disable the view of the log if we are not interested any any longer. We can also get rid of a couple of other fields. These are not so that important. And now we have brought back our table to the four parameters: the min, the max, EC50, and the hill. But the EC50 is now directly reported together with its confidence bands. And this we can use to make a new table where we actually start to report. So this is what we call the interaction sheet. And now we are bringing in a new table, creating a new table, and we rename this to a, a report.
And this is quite typical what we do in, 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 in the Morphit binders we build. We have this interaction sheet where you can uh, inspect your data and play with your data and knock out data points inspect and, and inspect all, the, all of the outputs. And then whenever you are ready, you switch to the report and that is not interactive any longer and you get a nice overview of the results of your binder. So let's, uh, let's tell you now that we can add a field header from another table. So if we do that, we can bring in the data set from the interaction table. And this is the way how tables can be linked in Morphit. So in this case, we call this a borrow. So not only it imports the data set field from the interaction table from here, but it's also bringing in the contents. So it sees that there is an A, B and a C and it imports those data in that linked field as well. And that is sufficient for Morphit to understand that you can add more fields. So we use a formula now to bring back the EC50. You see, so this is as simple as it, as it gets. Uh, Morphit understands that by having this borrow, that it should bring in this value of 7.78 in the A data field. So there is a, a straight connection between those two tables now. And we can also bring in the EC50 upper or lower and the upper and we use the same sort of formula so it's referring to another table this is the lower and this is the upper and you see if you look at this formula that the table name is used with an exclamation sign so interaction that is the table where it gets the data from and then the easy 50 upper and this is sufficient to bring in all this data in this table so we change the display of these three and now we get to we, we start to build up a nice report of course we can add all the other uh, parameters also uh, with the range uh, that is uh, that is telling us about the spread of the values. But what we can now do as well is create a plot of these. So let's, let's do that. We push this all down, demote group header, and then we get room for a new field. So this is a single field, and we can turn that into a graph or a chart. So we make that a new chart, and now we are going to add a series, and we make that adjust the column. And the column is now with x data values is the data set. So that is a category scale, A, B, C. And as y values, we give it the EC50. So now we have it and we clear the point. And this brings back a chart which is showing the three EC50 values for the three data sets. So it's a nice display, but we didn't do this for, for, for nothing. So the lower and the upper can be brought in as an error bar or as whiskers in this, in this bar chart. So let's do that. We add a series and we call that the spread. And the spread is of a different type. This is now an error bar. And then we use as Y values the EC50, that's the midpoint. As the high whisker, we use the upper. And as the low, we take the lower. And that's enough. And now we take out the point. We don't display it. And then we get the nice whiskers inside of the bar chart. And this is quite nice because now you see that the spread in the B series is large. Whereas in the C, it's almost, almost zero, and here it's quite small. And in the interaction, you can see that that is indeed, uh, that makes sense, because there is quite some spread here in these yellow data points. So that means that the EC50, which is the, the spread in the EC50, which in, is in this direction, that's the projection, more or less, of this spread 
through the curve into this spread. So it makes sense that here the spread is almost zero and here it's pretty small and the fit is, is very, very good. So this, uh, this can also be done for the other parameters, of course, but that is uh, then the subject of the, of the next video. So this concludes my, my third video. Thanks for watching.